A railway drainage system must safely channel water away from vulnerable track assets to an outfall. For it to work efficiently, every part of the system must function effectively. If the system is not properly managed, it will impact upon other track assets, causing problems such as earthwork failures, poor track geometry, or track circuit failures. This video examines the different elements that make up a typical railway drainage system and how they can be maintained effectively. In a cutting, the surrounding ground is higher than the railway, so water from the higher, adjoining land enters the drainage system and flows towards the track. As water flows downhill, it is captured in a crest drain, which runs along the length of the top of a cutting slope. The drain itself can either be an open ditch or piped. In this example, the water is channeled towards the track. The crest drain has to channel varying amounts of water, depending on the catchment area of the surrounding land. When a high volume of water is collected, some or all of it can be diverted directly into the track drainage through a cascade or flume drain. A cascade is a stepped open channel, usually installed on slopes with steep gradients. The steps regulate the water flow by breaking the velocity as it travels down to track level. A flume is installed on slopes with shallower gradients. Flumes also transport water from the top to the bottom of the cutting but are usually in the form of a pipe drain. In a cutting, water courses that need to cross the track can be transported either over the track in an aqueduct or under the track via a siphon. Track drainage comprises of a series of catch pits, generally 30 metres apart, connected by a series of filter or carrier pipes usually located in both the cess and the six foot. Water enters the track drainage catch pits from the crest drains via flumes or cascade drains. Water can also enter through perforations in the track drainage pipes. Water enters the catch pit through an inlet pipe. The inlet pipe is situated higher than the outlet pipe. The water level rises in the sump to the level of the outlet pipe where it flows away down an outlet pipe. The drop sump at the bottom of the catch pit acts as a trap to collect and confine silt and debris from being washed into the next pipe run. Regular maintenance is undertaken to remove the build-ups in the catch pits. In this scenario, water within the track drainage flows downhill and enters the mouth of a tunnel. At this point, the cess drains redirect to the centre of the track to the six-foot carrier drain that runs through the tunnel. A tunnel carrier drain is normally made of brickwork and they are much larger than the track drainage pipes as they must transport the entire volume of water from the cess and six-foot drains along the complete length of the tunnel. Chambers are located at regular intervals along the tunnel carrier drain. These act as inspection chambers for maintenance. Guttering, mounted along the tunnel walls, captures water as it seeps in. Water passes from the guttering through downpipes, leading to cross pipes that connect with the tunnel carrier drain. As the water reaches the last catch pit of the six-foot carrier drain at the end of the tunnel, it is channeled out to the two cess drains on either side of the track. The water travels down the cess drains to the end of the cutting slope. Track drainage could end when the railway becomes at grade and it connects to a third-party drainage for example, highway drainage or an embankment when it connects to embankment tow drains. When the railway is on an embankment, the surrounding ground is lower than the track and water flows away from the track down the embankment slopes. Water is collected in a tow drain at the bottom of the embankment slope. The drain is usually an open ditch but can also be piped. This prevents flooding, which could cause embankment instability. The tow drain channels water downhill, where it discharges into an outfall. An outfall is the point where the water from the railway drainage system joins another drainage system. This can be a natural system, such as a river or a pond, or a third-party drainage system, such as an artificial watercourse 
or highway drainage system.